The derivative of a function at a point when it exists is a number, the slope of the tangent line to the graph of the function at that point. But if we let the point vary, then instead of getting a single number, we obtain a function, the derivative function, which is defined wherever the slope of the tangent line exists and is finite. So we say that the derivative of y equals f of x is f prime of x, which is the limit of the difference quotient of f at x as h approaches 0. And we say that the function f is differentiable on an open interval a, b, if f prime of x, the derivative of f at x, exists at every point x inside that interval a, b. And when we say that we are looking for the derivative of a function f without specifying at which point, then what we mean is that we are looking for this function f prime, the derivative function, which assigns to input numbers x the output value f prime of x, provided that this limit of the difference quotient is, exists and is finite. There are various notations that we can use for this derivative function. So if y equals f of x is your function, then all of these expressions mean the same exact thing, the derivative of that function. So these are the most common ways to denote the derivative. So far we've only used the prime notation, f prime of x. This notation is due to Lagrange. The dot notation was used by Newton. So y dot for Newton meant the same thing, the derivative of the function y with respect to its independent variable. dy over dx or df over dx are notations introduced by Leibniz. So a word of warning with these ones. So we write dy over dx as if it was a fraction, but strictly speaking, this is not a fraction, but rather the limit of a fraction. So dy over dx is the limit as delta x approaches zero of delta y over delta x, delta y being the rise, the difference of coordinates along the y-axis, whereas delta x is the run, the difference of coordinates along the x-axis. So be careful when uh, dealing with the, the Leibniz notation. Uh, we cannot handle and manipulate dy over dx as if it was a normal fraction in general. Then uh, if you want to denote differentiation with respect to x, you can write d over dx and then apply it to a function f of x or simply write capital D apply to the function f of x. Now the last notation is generally attributed to Euler. This derivative function f prime of x may not be defined at certain points x along the number line and there are various ways in which the derivative can fail to exist, one of which we've already seen when the graph of the function f has a corner, a sharp corner at the point x, then the derivative does not exist there and I'm thinking of course uh, of the absolute value of x which at x equals 0 has this sharp corner and we have shown that its derivative at 0 does not exist. However, everywhere else for x not being 0 we have a clearly defined derivative. For negative x we get negative 1 as the slopes of the tangent lines there are negative 1 whereas for positive x we get for the derivative positive 1 as the slopes of the tangent lines there are positive 1. So if we put these values together into the derivative function of the absolute value of x and plot the graph of this function, we get a figure like this. So for negative x, it assigns the values negative 1. For positive x, it assigns the values positive 1. And at x equals 0, the function is not defined. Another way for the derivative to not exist is f being discontinuous at x. An example of that, of course, could be the signum function at x equals 0. It has this jump discontinuity. Therefore, the signum function um, has no, no derivative at x equals 0. The derivative of this function is not defined there. Everywhere else, the derivative is 0. Therefore, the graph of the derivative of the signum function looks almost like the constant 0 function, except for the derivative of the signal function not being defined at x equals 0. Yet another way for the derivative to not exist is f having a vertical tangent at x. So vertical tangent is a tangent line that is parallel to the y-axis. There, the, for those kinds of vertical tangents, the slope is infinite, therefore it cannot be assigned as a value to that point x by the derivative function. To give you an example, think of the cube root of x um, as 
and at x it has for tangent line the y-axis which is a vertical tangent with infinite slope and when we compute the derivative function of the cube root of x using the definition of the derivative and plot the resulting uh, function we get this graph which clearly uh, shows how x approaching 0 we get an infinite limit the limit is positive infinity so there the derivative is not defined okay finally f could widely oscillate around the point x so to give you an example of a function like that x squared times the sine of 1 over x with its continuous extension where we assign the value 0 at x equals 0 to this function we get uh, a function that is continuous everywhere you can check it at 0 being continuous by the squeeze theorem now when we compute the derivative function of this function uh, using the definition of the derivative we get a function whose graph looks something like this around x equals 0 it widely oscillates to the point where as x approaches 0 the limit does not exist now these are the various ways in which the derivative can fail to exist furthermore if we repeat differentiation taking derivatives iterate taking derivatives we get higher derivatives so taking the derivative of the derivative of f results in the second derivative of f which we can denote in these various ways differentiating the second derivative once more we get the third derivative of f and so on for any positive integer n we can get the nth derivative of the function f by taking the function and differentiating it with respect to x n times now these higher derivatives are extremely useful in approximating functions but we will see that in a different video um, this is enough for now let's solve some problems here's the graph of the function f and we are looking for the derivative of f evaluated at x equals 1 so pause the video and find the derivative input it in the in the box hope you paused it and have inputted 2 for the derivative of f at 1 which you can see at be, as being the slope of the tangent line around x equals 1 next uh, calculate the derivative or um, check the derivative of the function at x equals 4 pause the video and input your answer in the box so at x equals 4 the slope of the tangent line seems to be 0 because this uh, tangent line is a horizontal line parallel to the x-axis so that derivative would be 0 next is a different function and a different graph select all points x at which f prime of x does not exist so pause the video and make your selections now hope you paused it and have selected these three points so at x equals 1 and at x equals 4 the graph have, have the graph of the function have uh, sharp corners whereas at x equals 3 uh, you see a uh, jump discontinuity it's only at x equals 2 out of these points where the derivative of the function exists and is equal to 0 it seems next compute the derivative f prime of x of the function f of x equals 3x squared plus 4x minus 1 using the definition of the derivative pause the video and select your answer now hope you paused it and have selected 6x plus 4 so you can find this derivative but using the, the definition so f prime of x is the limit as h approaches 0 of the difference quotient of f at x so that would be the value of f at x plus h so 3 times x plus h squared plus 4 x plus h minus 1 from which we subtract f of x so 3x squared plus 4x minus 1 and all of this needs to be divided by h so when we expand the parentheses there will be some nice cancellations uh, 3x squared 4x and negative 1 are all being cancelled by their opposites and all we are being left with is 6x h uh, plus 4h uh, plus 3h squared all divided by h after we cancel the common factor of h in the numerator and denominator uh, we get 6x plus 4 plus 3h and the limit of which as x as h approaches 0 can be found by direct substitution and it is 6x plus 4 okay let's look at the next question calculate the second derivative of f of x equals 5x squared so pause the video and input your answer in the box 
copy paste it and I've inputted 10. So here the second derivative can be obtained by repeated differentiation. The first derivative of 5x squared um, can be obtained by remembering that we already computed the derivative of x squared being 2x. So the derivative of 5x squared is 5 times 2x, which is 10x, which is a linear function in itself. So its graph is already a straight line with slope being the coefficient of x. So the derivative of, uh, the derivative of x is simply the number 10. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.